In utter despair, however, we gather in sure hope of the resurrection. We gather to give God glory for the life of Harriet Francis, who many of us knew as Hattie. We gather to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of family and friends around us, and we gather to proclaim the good news of eternal life in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, those who have finished their race and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those who are dear to us, whom we name in our hearts before you. Today we especially thank you for the life of Hattie Francis, whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Cleanse our hearts, O God. Redeem our memories. Renew our confidence in your goodness, shown through all people. Forgive us. Help us to forgive. Make us channels of goodness and love to all. And in those final days of our lives, bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand together and sing hymn number one. There are purple hymnals either on or under your chairs that will have that song. Let us pray. Source of true wisdom, calm the troubled waters of our hearts. Still all other voices but your own. May we hear and obey what you tell us in your word. Through the power of your spirit. Amen. This afternoon, 
I have two passages that I will be reading for you. The first is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. And the second is from selected verses from Romans 8. Hear now God's word. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A a voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low and even the ground shall become level the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, Surely, the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Get up to a high mountain, O Zion. O herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead them like a mother sheep. Romans chapter 8, and I'll be reading verses 14 through 23 and 31 through 39. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider the sufferings of this present time not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Only Jesus Christ. And it is Jesus Christ who died for us. Yes, he was, it was he who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship? Will distress or persecution? Will famine? Or nakedness? Or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On January 11th, 1955, Harriet Francis was born to her parents, Medellin and Hopkins. She was their only child, and Patty, as most of us knew her, eventually had worked through college. She studied animal sciences. She then focused on reproductive biology as she was doing her master's degree. And then she turned toward law, taking what she had learned and applying it to that field. Just before she went to law school, however, she started attending, uh, shall we say, evenings at a certain bar in town. And that's where she met Jeff. Their friends introduced them because they had the same last name. Jeff made sure to tell me that they had the same last name before and after, and it's no family relations beforehand, all is good. <laughs> Patty and Jeff got married in April of 1989. Many of you uh, knew Hattie for many years, much longer than I. Um, I moved here in, uh, during the pandemic, and I didn't see much of Hattie before this summer. But what stuck out to me is present in this room. People from a variety of different backgrounds, and very specific backgrounds too, but all very close to her uh, and very influential. Hattie had a deep passion for a handful of things, for singing, for horses and for showing, and then in her work, through uh, she worked in, in, in law, in uh, agricultural law. And so these th three things, you know, lawyers, farmers, and singers generally don't end up in the same room all the time. <laughs> with their farms being swapped and whatnot at church. And so since that doesn't often happen, it, it is remarkable to note. Hattie was incredibly invested in those things too. Uh, before the pandemic, there was rarely a night where she would be at home. And Jeff noted that she was always at a board meeting or singing with any, any choir. Uh, Hattie is one of those people who was gifted in singing and could show up at any number of churches for practice and be welcomed to sing on a moment's notice. She was that good. <laughs> Something that stood out to me about Hattie, though, was her unwavering and steadfast will. Some, some call that stubbornness, and in the church we call that steadfast will and strong perseverance. Some uh, might have, if they noticed that she would get upset for not getting her way, uh, not, you know, upset, she would be disappointed in not getting uh, things the way that she thought they should have gone. In the church, we call that righteous discontentment. Uh, Hattie was a woman who knew what she liked and knew what needed to happen and would pursue it. She was, she wasn't haphazard in her decisions. She reflected beforehand, and when she made that decision, she would live with its consequences, but she would pursue it all with everything that she had. The passage that we read from Romans in particular this morning, or this afternoon, I should say, I chose because it, in its finality, reminded me a lot of Hattie's spirit. The writer of this letter says, all of these things are true. There, there is a world around us that is broken. Things are going to come to a, a, to a certain end. So what? What does that mean for us? Should we up and run away? Should we live life a certain way because it doesn't matter? No. And there's logic behind this, uh, if you follow the, the writer's logic. We build from the most consequential and foundational truths that we have. We, lived life, we live life in a way that God calls us to live, a life that we are proud and can defend, so to speak. We do so knowing that at the end, we will face 
God, Jesus, in judgment day. And in that day, we will be told, we will be asked, did you live according to the way that you should have lived? And we know that Jesus loves us. God loves us so much that God gave Jesus to be a, a sacrifice that uh, the one who condemns us is the one or could condemn us is also the one who prays for us, who intercedes for us, who died for us, who rose for us. We stand with a, a partial judge almost. The sure knowledge that comes from this is God loves us with such a deep and unfounding love that nothing can separate us from that love. There is nothing that we can do, nothing that we can experience that does enough to separate us from the eternity that is God's love. In its finality, it is a, per, it is a dogged pursuit of God's love that or God's love of us, rather, that comes from this passage that strikes me as I consider, as I thought about, Hattie and her passionate self, her steadfast will. She loved, she loved thing, the, things, the things that she loved in life, the people, the relationships, the purposes, the, the I, I want my default is to say ministries, but the work of, her, of the boards that she was on, they had purpose, and her, her, her life was invested in those things so heavily. And as she stands in eternity to defend what she did, there's very little in my mind that doubts that she would say she invested hard to do what God had instilled in her to do, using the gifts that she had been given, gifts that as a combination that few others have, but to make a difference nonetheless. Her truth was that she was a beloved child of God with gifts in law and in law, gifts in she had gifts in law, gifts in working with horses, and gifts in singing and music. Gifts of family and friends that were surrounded, surrounding her. And she lived that life passionately. May our memories, may the stories that we have of Hattie and that we tell be testaments. Testaments that draw us back to God's call on each of our own lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I now invite the choir to come forward. The choir will be singing um, a beautiful piece. It, Hattie sang this with the choir in the past, correct? Fantastic. And this is a choir made up of some of the choirs that Hattie has sung with quite regularly over the years.
us pray. <clears throat> o oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. We thank you especially for your servant, Hattie, whose baptism is now complete in her death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all that was good and kind and faithful in her, and for the grace that you gave her. We lift up to, those, up to you those who grieve. Provide comfort and peace throughout the journey of grief they endure. And may they find hope in the comfort that death is past, that her pain is ended. Almighty God, in Christ Jesus, you promise many rooms in your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight, some sure sign of your kingdom, and where vision fails to trust your love, which never fails. Lift heavy sorrow, give us a good hope in Jesus, so we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to the glad reunion in the life to come through Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together and sing hymn number 625, the first verse and the fourth verse. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Please remain standing as we uh, prepare for a prayer and a final blessing. Let us pray. Only you are immortal, O creator and maker of all. We are mortal. We are made of the earth, and so to the earth we shall return. Your very words ordained our limitations when you created us, saying, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Indeed, all of us go down to the dust, yet from the graveside the song of your people continues to be one of adoration and thanksgiving. Standing here, we do just that. O oh God, give rest. Give rest, O oh merciful Savior, to Hattie, who stands in eternity's glory, where there is neither pain, nor sorrow, nor sighing, only life everlasting. Into your hands, O oh gracious Redeemer, we commend Harriet Francis. Acknowledge her to be, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold. A, lead, a rather a lamb of your flock, a sinner redeemed by you. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, envelop her 
in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and welcome her into the glorious community of the saints in light. We pray in your name. Amen. As you go, go with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May our God's countenance be upon you, and may God give you peace. Amen. Sorry, my, my speaker's kind of going through a little bit. Yeah.